Hi, everybody. Welcome to the third uh, international uh, Comey meeting controversies in multiple myeloma uh, held uh, uh, this year here in this lovely city of Paris. I'm Mohamed Moti, professor of hematology here in Paris, and I'm joined today with my co-chair, Professor uh, Nagler from Tel Hashomer. So the question, Arnon, today is about, this is our first day at Comey. Uh, what are your quick thoughts on the meeting? I think that the meeting is uh, very well attended. And more importantly, I think that the interest and the number of people and the faculty and industry in the meeting is uh, just the reflection of the huge project that uh, is achieved for the benefit of patient of this, uh, what used to be when we were maybe 10 years ago, or something like this, incurable disease, which was nicely illustrated by the slide that you show of IFM, how the prognosis of patient in myeloma is really improving year by year and now most of the, a big section of the patients uh, have an overall survival of 10 years, which was, I guess, unbelievable dream few, just a few years ago. And uh, as uh, was shown by prof very elegantly by Professor Cavo, this is a trend and, uh, and the horizon and the future are, are really fascinating for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I fully agree with you, Arnon. Uh, the survival benefit uh, has been impressive over the last uh, 10 or 15 years and nothing to do with what we learned at medical school. Now, uh, especially in the transplant eligible patient, it's almost uh, uh, 85 to 90 percent uh, survival at three years. And actually, uh, one other thing that was really uh, very uh, touching for me, uh, this morning session actually, we started prior to the opening with a patient uh, advocacy uh, session. And uh, I was really very pleased to see now, and this a few years ago, that wasn't conceivable in Europe. That wasn't part of the culture where we had together the Patient Association from France, from Croatia, uh, from Norway, uh, from Belgium, uh, and we had also uh, the European umbrella of all of these organizations. And it was so nice to see these motivated patients sitting together, exchanging with the physician, with the other healthcare providers, and communicating their wishes, and also really playing a major role. Uh, what was your impression? So I think that this is, uh, again, showing us that, uh, you know, patients with myeloma have hope, uh, live together, uh, live longer, and therefore uh, they are really active. And uh, nobody, nobody but the patient know better the disease and sometimes, uh, yes, you nicely uh, told, uh, I don't remember whom, about the fatigue, you know. When we prescribe a drug, and the a drug causes neuropathy or mucositis, we, we take it as a toxicity. But when there is some fatigue or some weakness, then it's uh, nothing for us but uh, changing the quality of life of the patient. So, yes, last night also, I mean, very impressive, for instance, the French Patient Association, they celebrated yesterday the 10 years anniversary. These people that, uh, you know, they are sick with what used to be in global disease, are active, have ideas, uh, negotiate with the pharma uh, for, for benefit, improving quality of life, not just showing uh, disease-free survival and overall survival, and uh, this is really impressive, amazing yeah. even. Abs ab ab absolutely, and actually uh, now we have all stakeholders working together. We have just spoken about the patient. Uh, our opening session was about 
biology of the disease, especially uh, translational research. And again, uh, I was really very impressed to see how uh, understanding the pathophysiology, the biology, is allowing now uh, to design combinations. There were a couple of talks uh, about uh, the mechanism of action of different agents. Uh, I think we reviewed this morning the mechanism of action of monoclonal antibodies, especially CD38 uh, uh, targeted uh, monoclonal antibodies, the IMIDs, the proteasome inhibitors. And it was fascinating to see uh, how we are refining now these combination. It's not any more empirical in my opinion, so maybe the era of individualized, personalized approach is not too far. Do you have the same feeling? Yes, and I would add to it that we have now the uh, laboratory means and test to evaluate in depth what we are uh, doing because the people now are, are talking about uh, a minimal residual disease of 10 to the minus 6, it means that there is no one sick or myeloma uh, cell in a million cells. And now we can have the tools really to evaluate what we are doing and what we are giving, not just from the MRD, but also for instance for the bone disease, you know, that is uh, uh, the main uh, organ and the cause of suffering for the patient with the PET-CT, with the sophisticated uh, PET-CT. And I think that this is, we are now in a, in an era, not just that we have a lot of uh, tools and new drugs and combination and more to come, and also in a really uh, horizon the area for the immunotherapy, but also that we can objectively assess uh, the response and also, you know, the emergence of uh, malignant cells or clonal evolution and transformation to understand uh, what drives the disease, what uh, gets the disease to progress and how we conquer uh, this malignant clone. Yes, uh, you're right. On the other hand, all of this has a big cost. And uh, now, uh, in every Maloma Congress or meeting, we have this specific talk about how to tackle affordability, uh, availability of drugs to everybody. But because it's not only about the rich in developed countries. I think our duty, our commitment is to make all of these dr active drugs, effective drugs available to every patient on the planet. And we are fortunate again having today Professor Harousseau uh, highlighting and trying to address this complex question because there's no single answer. It's not black and white. You know, there are good reasons why innovation is expensive and there are also good reasons why we should decrease the price. And I think we are on the same line in this issue, make it accessible to everybody and affordable. Yeah, this is a very, very important topic and I would say also a delicate one. But for me, it's the fact that we are able to address this issue now, it's kind of a luxury a position for the myeloma patient that uh, now that we are able to cure at least a subgroup of this patient, now we can think on the quality of life of the patient and also of the cost. And for sure for the issue of cost, which are not, there will not be a one solution or instant solution. This should be a negotiation between the pharma and the academy and the physician. And here again, the patients are very important because after all, the patients are customers for this drug. As Rousseau told us uh, just a few minutes ago, they cannot, uh, they cannot, as in any other business, they cannot say, I will not buy the drug, I will buy the other one. But when a patient with myeloma is coming to a form that have to decide uh, about the price of a drug, I think that his voice is, uh, is much more important than the voice of a physician 
or a representative of pharma that is sitting there. And I think that the fact that we are openly talk about it, and there is some approaches, negotiations, and some attempt to uh, formulation this is very important. No, definitely. There is no magic solution. But I think uh, starting to talk and debate about it is a good start and will allow, I'm sure, to find solution. So this is all for today, Anon. Uh, we will talk about the rest of the amazing content of the meeting in the uh, n very soon. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm looking forward. Thank you. Thank you.